Imagine waking up one morning seeing a punt floating right there in the sky, one that looks exactly like your Earth. It's not a meteor, it's not a spaceship, it's a perfect copy of the planet you live on, a mirror world, existing side by side with this very one. From a distance, it's identical, oceans, continents, atmosphere, all the same. But deep down, this isn't just a simple copy, it's something extraordinary. A different version of reality, existing within the quantum multiverse, where every possibility plays out. This isn't science fiction. It's one of the most cutting-edge theories in physics, opening the door to countless parallel worlds. And if that's true, then our universe is just one among infinite others, coexisting, yet completely separate. So the question is, if those worlds really exist, is there any way for us to reach them? Or is there something waiting for us out there, somewhere between dimensions we've never even imagined? Have scientists ever truly considered this? A second Earth, identical in every way, suddenly appearing in our sky? This isn't science fiction. It's not a movie script either. It's a real hypothesis, rooted in quantum physics and the multiverse theory. A theory that suggests every choice, every possibility creates a new reality. And somewhere out there, those realities might mirror us, some of them exactly. But what happens if one of them suddenly crosses over? Is it a crack in the fabric of the universe or a message from something far beyond our understanding? Because to grasp this mirror world, we first have to understand the bizarre nature of quantum mechanics, where nothing is certain and every possibility can exist all at once. When people hear multiverse, they often think of science fiction. But in modern physics, there's a real theory that suggests our universe may not be the only one. In 1957, physicist Hugh Everett III proposed a bold and controversial idea. At every quantum moment, the universe splits. This became the foundation of the many worlds interpretation, one of the leading explanations for the bizarre behavior of quantum mechanics. When a quantum particle exists in multiple states at once, Everett argued that, instead of just one outcome being chosen, every possible outcome actually happens in separate universes. That means, every time an atom decays or an electron flips its spin, the universe branches off, each copy containing a different result. There is no collapse of the wave function as traditional physics would claim. Instead, the universe multiplies, and we're just living in one branch among millions. This opens up a wild possibility. If the multiverse is vast enough, there could be a version of the universe that is identical to ours, down to the tiniest detail. And if these branches aren't entirely sealed off from each other, then two mirrored universes colliding might not be impossible. Everything in our everyday world, from a stone on the ground to the stars above, seems to follow clear physical laws, cause and effect, action and reaction. But when we zoom into the smallest scales, to electrons, photons, quarks, all logic collapses. Why can a particle exist in multiple places at once? Why does it suddenly choose one position only when observed? And more importantly, what exactly triggers that choice? An electron passing through two slits creates an interference pattern, like a wave. But the moment we observe it, it behaves like a particle, as if it knows it's being watched. This is not philosophy, this is a lab result, repeatable, verified, and deeply unsettling. Because if observation changes the outcome, then what we call objective reality might not be objective at all. We're forced to confront the unthinkable. Does consciousness play a role in shaping the universe? This is the heart of the quantum problem, not a glitch in our instruments, but a crack in the very foundation of reality. Faced with the quantum paradox, physicists had to make a choice. They couldn't ignore it because the experiments kept working, kept repeating, kept defying classical logic. But their interpretations diverged dramatically. The Copenhagen interpretation, led by Niels Bohr, chose compromise. It said, reality doesn't exist until it's measured. In the quantum world, everything is a probability, a superposition, until an observer intervenes. It's as if the universe waits for us to decide how it should exist. It sounds mystical, even absurd, but it works. It explains lasers, semiconductors, quantum computing. It's accurate, predictive, and completely baffling. But then came a different idea, far more radical. Hugh Everett, a PhD student, proposed a model with no observers, no collapse. He claimed all outcomes happen in parallel universes. When you observe an electron in position A, there is another you observing it in position B. The universe doesn't choose, it splits. And so many worlds are born. No observation needed. 
No consciousness required, just pure mathematics spawning an infinite number of realities. Two schools of thought, two visions of existence, one is quiet, weird and proven, the other is vast, bold and unverifiable. And even now, we still don't know which is true. We've seen how observation can alter outcomes, how particles exist in multiple states until measured, and how consciousness itself might be entangled with reality. But what if we could harness these strange laws? Not just observe them, but use them. This is where quantum computing enters. Unlike classical computers, built on bits of zeros and ones, quantum computers use qubits, which can be both zero and one at the same time. It's not just faster, it's a completely different way of processing information, like opening a thousand doors at once instead of one by one. Through entanglement, qubits can influence each other instantly, no matter how far apart. It sounds impossible, but it's already happening. Google's quantum processor solved in seconds what would take supercomputers 10,000 years. And that's just the beginning. With quantum power, we could simulate molecules in ways never before possible, design drugs atom by atom, revolutionize AI, crack unbreakable codes, or break reality itself. Because if our minds are quantum systems too, what happens when we merge consciousness with quantum code? The line between user and machine may start to blur. In one version of reality, your journey suddenly halts, but in another, it continues without interruption, and your mind never notices the break. This is the paradox of quantum immortality. According to the many worlds interpretation, every time the universe faces a split, every outcome plays out somewhere. A version of you always survives, and your consciousness follows that path, the one where you're still aware, still breathing, still you. From your perspective, the story never ends, not because you're invincible, but because there's always one timeline where you made it through. And if that's true, then you might already be on your 10th, 100th, or millionth version of survival, never realizing what you've avoided. So here's the question. If your mind always wakes up in the version where it keeps going, are you truly surviving or just slipping endlessly between shadows of reality? Let that sink in. And if this kind of thinking breaks your brain just a little, hit subscribe, because we're just getting started.